Welcome back to the Big Cubes factory. You might recall a couple of months ago, we did a build review on Matt and Dave from Rogan Industries Camaro. This is a uh, second owner, I think Dave's a second owner. Owned it since 1987, uh, imported from America, of course. Converted to right-hand drive and now fitted with a 565 cubic inch big block Chev. This engine made just shy of 1,000 horsepower on the engine dyno when it was built in America by Patterson Elite, uh, who is a pro stock engine builder. And uh, I think it made somewhere about, about 750 at the wheels through 2400 and a big nine inch on Kai's dyno. At that time, it was fitted with a pair of very large carburetors and also very expensive carburetors. And uh, we did allude to the fact when we were talking about it that that was gonna change in the future. And uh, this episode is all about that change. This was a bit of a collective effort. Dave stripped down the old setup of the carburetors and the original arrangement that it had that he knew very well. Then Matt took control and did some fabrication work, made the necessary changes to convert it over to EFI. And then finally, I did the wiring of the Haltech Nexus R3 basically in exchange for Matt helping Woody with his diff on his crown. So everybody wins. At first we thought the biggest hurdle to doing this job would it be to convince Dave that uh, EFI was going to be of benefit over the carburetors that are already fitted to it. It had some pretty uh, sort of high-end carbies on it and they were probably the second set I think that it's had on it. And Dave is very well versed in getting the best out of a carburetor. Uh, he was a former Australian Pro Stock Champion, so uh, carburetors and small blocks were his jam and uh, when you're racing Pro Stock you've got to know exactly what to do and be very uh, attentive to detail to get the best out of the out of the engine. So he was used to fiddling around with it and making changes and you know they, they were actually able to be jetted individually on each uh, throttle blade on each barrel so to speak. So it was running very well and obviously it made good power on the dyno and it did perform really well on the track. But uh, Matt being uh, a younger man, he is uh, sort of, he's on our side as far as, far as it goes with fuel injection. We're big fans of it, as you know. Um, not haters of carburetors at all, but definitely it's just a new generation and we understand the benefits of, of fuel injection and probably more importantly, engine management as a whole. Um, rather than just fuel delivery. So we finally got, a, got Dave on board and uh, so he went, got together and stripped down everything, sold off the old carbies and replaced them with some big four barrel throttle bodies, which you can see here. These are AccuFab units. I think they're about 1500 CFM, but I might be wrong. Uh, they are bigger in airflow than the, than the carburetors that are on it. They're basically outline interchangeable. They bolt straight onto the original inlet manifold which is a very fancy sheet metal unit. Uh, they took the, the inlet manifold off and Matt then uh, put some injector bosses into it and also made some rails to suit out of uh, an extrusion that you can buy through Raceworks and fitted them up with some 1500cc Raceworks injectors. Uh, we did have to have a little bit of a think about where to place the actual injector in the runner. Normally on a normal road car the injectors would be as close to the valve as possible so usually right down the bottom of the intake runner or even in the cylinder head sometimes but this engine is a sort of a max effort sort of sort of deal and it doesn't it only operates between four and seven and a half thousand rpm other than idling so uh, putting the injectors up higher was was what we figured out was probably going to be the best way to do it and to be honest we just sort of looked around and saw how other people did it and uh, basically placed them at the top of the runner. There's probably more that could be done, but we're just working with basically what we could do with it uh, in-house, so to speak. So that took care of the uh, injection itself, which is pretty basic, really. Um, the fuel system, Matt built a new fuel tank for it because it had a very, very small uh, tank that was basically just useful for doing a couple of runs on the strip, minimum weight. Uh, we had to incorporate some fuel pumps into that. So rather than having external pumps, he just built a whole new tank and fitted it out with a Raceworks uh, pump hanger, same as what we would normally use in a fuel cell, uh, like in the back of my crown, for instance. 
So that's that's housing a couple of Walbro 525s, I think, from memory. They then run through to a deadhead fuel system, so it's non it, it it's not returned from the front of the car here. The the fuel pressure regulator, the GFB uh, FXD, is in the in the rear of the car, and it's basically just bypassing straight back into the tank to obtain the required pressure for the system. Uh, the idea behind that, which I've probably said many times before, but if, you, if you're only listening for the first time because you just saw me chuck a big carburetor in the bin, the idea behind that is that any fuel that comes to the front of the car goes into the engine. There's nothing circulated because circulation causes heat build up. Uh, you're basically using the fuel as a coolant. So anything that comes to the front, it's under pressure, it's only gonna go into the engine and be burnt. So the fuel stays cool. If you've got an old school engine like this and you're considering uh, switching over to EFI or engine management, probably the thing that you need to think about initially is how do, do I give the ECU its the engine position signal. Uh, it's quite easy with a big block because they're very well supported and probably small block sheds as well. Uh, basically we've got a crank trigger on the front of the engine. Uh, this already ran a crank trigger which most high effort carbureted engines will because it gives you uh, much more stable spark delivery even though they've got a distributor they are measuring the rpm signal off the crankshaft itself so that's basically retained uh, it's a um, 12 minus one tooth in this case doesn't really matter as far as a modern ecu goes but you don't really need too much complexity in the case of an engine like this on the back we've got rid of the distributor and that's been replaced with an msd uh, basically just a home signal. It's a single pulse per 720 degree rotation, and that gives the ECU the reset so it knows what half of the cycle it is and everything can be run sequentially, uh, which is the way it should be. So all that stuff's off the shelf, pretty simple. Just uh, make it fit and uh, basically pretty much bolt on in this case. So having removed the distributor, we have to think about an ignition system to go with it. In this case, we are running one coil per cylinder, very similar to what you would see on an LS vehicle, coil near plug, they call it. So we're using Haltech uh, IGN 1A coils, which are uh, very powerful smart coils. So they have an in internal igniter and they, they can be commanded directly from the Haltech um, VCU. These have been mounted directly to the uh, valve cover. Matt's mate, Dave Mott from FFM's made him some very nice uh, custom brackets to hold them on and even engraved them or routed. How do they do that? Routed on? Yeah, it's a CNC router. CNC router, so yeah, it's got his uh, business name and everything in them. They're really nice. You should sell them, Dave. To go along with the injectors and uh, ignition system, we also need a suite of sensors to input data to the ECU so it can decide how to operate those things. We've got the basic stuff like coolant temperature, inlet air temperature and throttle position. Those are uh, basic requirements. But further to that, we've also added a bunch of sensors to allow for both data logging and active safety and um, other management strategies like traction. We've got um, oil pressure, fuel pressure, of course, that's basic stuff. Can shut down the engine if any of those things go bad. Uh, we've also got on the transmission a transmission temperature sensor and also a uh, linear position sensor to uh, indicate what gear or what position the uh, shift is in, which we can then use for things like uh, traction or power management strategies for on the strip. Uh, of, of interest on this one, we've also got a crankcase vacuum sensor on it. That's Kind of an unusual thing for especially for a street car but um, this vehicle's got a uh, it's it's a an external oil pump so it's still wet sump but it's got an external oil pump and on the front of the oil pump it's got a vacuum pump so that vacuum pump sucks the, the crankcase into a vacuum and it's got some valving in the back of it here that um, that can be set to achieve a certain amount of vacuum in the crankcase and there's there's kind of like an ideal vacuum point uh, where it will give you the best power gain. So you do gain power by reducing the, like the pumping load underneath the pistons. And as I said, NA engine, all these little things do count. You can't just put another pound of boost into it. So stuff like that is important.
With the engine management system all sorted, uh, it was time to address a couple of other things uh, mechanically that may uh, lead to a bit more power. So along with those bigger throttle bodies, we've got a Rogan Industries built set of headers. So these are now four into one style, uh, two and a quarter inch primaries, which is pretty standard for a big block of this capacity. Previously, it only had two inch primaries uh, in a, um, a tri-wire or a 421 setup on each side. So they're, they're quite small for an engine of this size, um, albeit they did perform pretty well on the track previously. Those headers then lead into three and a half inch um, front pipes, and then it finishes with them joined into a five inch uh, common pipe just behind the gearbox. So pretty rowdy, will do the job. To complement that fresh new exhaust system, we are running one wide band per cylinder on this engine. Being an all-effort all NA engine, there is circumstance where you are getting different uh, combustion between individual cylinders and evening them up via the software is a, a good way to get both a, a nicely balanced engine but also more power. So we're going to monitor each cylinder's burn. Uh, we've got four uh, Haltech WBO2 boxes, so that's a two sensors per box and they're all connected to the Nexus R3 VCU via CAN and it's all monitored in the software there. So when Kai gets it on the dyno, he can tune it up and then have a look and see what discrepancy we've got and then adjust for it to make, make that discrepancy as little as possible and possibly see more power. We don't know, uh, other engines definitely do have uh, differences between cylinders, but. The only way you're going to tell is to have those sensors in there. Uh, the other way you can do it is via EGT sensors, but they're not nowhere near as accurate as a wideband per cylinder. And you normally can't really do this with a turbo engine anyway, so we've never actually done it before because the widebands won't really work properly in a, in a pressurized exhaust system uh, just by design. So that'll be really cool to see how that works out. And how much power it can make. Everyone involved put a fair bit of effort into this to convert it over from Carby to EFI and we're all really keen to see whether it makes more power, which we think it will. Possibly not because of the EFI, but more, more so probably because of the exhaust system and the larger throttles. You might get actually see a bit more potential out of the engine itself, but also whether we're gonna have differences in uh, cylinder discrepancies and that sort of thing. It's all pretty nerdy and we're into that sort of stuff. Uh, main idea of this video, other than you seeing how cool this car is, is uh, to give you a bit of an idea what's involved in converting an older engine over to EFI. We've done it a couple of times before. Uh, it's not always maximum effort things like this. Sometimes it's just your basic 300 horsepower engine, but it's all doable and you can do it to any budget you want to specify. You just have to, uh, set yourself a budget and go looking and ask for help and you can get it sorted. Nothing wrong with carburetors. We all love to hack on them and make t-shirts that you can buy from the, from the uh, store. Leaky toilet, hey, eh? hey. Eh? Carburetors are fine and if that's your jam, then go for it. We know Dave loves his carbies and he's a master of them, but he's still open-minded enough at his young age to uh, embrace some modern technology and see how what difference it can make and how you can use that when you get out on the track so this is going to be an interesting one so let's head to the dyno and check out and see what it can do This thing on idle bloody shakes my soul. I can't even imagine what it's going to sound like wide open. <laughs> She's pretty rowdy. It She's is pretty, pretty rowdy. rowdy. So this thing's a bit different to 
you normal? I don't know. Maybe it's different to us, but maybe not different to you. Yeah, it hasn't been. I don't think we've had anything quite like this on the Skid Factory before. No, no, definitely not. Uh, eight wideband sensors. We, yes, we have a wideband per cylinder on this one. Um, so all hooked back into the Nexus R3. So we actually have, uh, yeah, wideband data for each cylinder, which is really cool. Means we can get fairly uh, accurate on the. Uh, individual individual cylinder tuning as well as uh, just verifying that everything's doing what it's supposed to do. So. Yeah, so this thing can, has been here before when it had carbies. It a, has. A lot has changed in regards to intake and exhaust yeah. as well as the EFI. What did it make here on your hub dyno last time? I think we left last time it was around 740-ish to 750-ish at the hub, yep. um, which played out from where this, this an engine like this, uh, it was engine dyno in America uh, before it came over, so we already knew roughly what power it was going to make, yep. uh, and that sort of checked out. I think it was, was somewhere in the like, like 1,040 or something like that at the crank, yep. um, and then goes 740, 750 at the hub. That tows typical drivetrain loss of uh, turbo 400 and 9 inch and all that sort of yep. stuff, so everything there sort of checks out. Uh, that was on MS109 last time, I believe, which is a, this is a fairly high compression. It's like 12.8 to 1 compression, 565 cube combo. So uh, it's a fairly, uh, I wouldn't say it's definitely not a max effort, but it's a definitely a fairly stout, naturally aspirated uh, combination designed for racing. It's, yeah. it's not something you drive to the shops, even though Matt might. <laughs> 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 God damn! <laughs> That's a pretty good result straight off the bat, Kai. <laughs> yeah, not too bad. Yeah. Um, little squeeze to see what it would do, and uh, yeah, so far very promising was that was that a full throttle thing just then i got i slowly ramped into it i was keeping an eye on all my vitals and i could see that everything looked happy so with with this thing it's a naturally aspirated combination that we've previously run before so it's one of those things it's not really we know what it's you know we know the engine and stuff's fine so pretty well as long as the ignition time is doing what i tell it to do and the fueling's doing what i tell it to do then yep. there's no i'm not scared to go into wide open throttle so yep. i sort of slowly squeeze the throttle down yeah uh and we did end up getting to around uh i think it was about 95 percent or whatever at the top of the run there uh so let's just call it 100 um and yeah straight away it's uh it's about 40 odd horsepower up on the on the ms 109 and the carbies uh and we're not even turning it this thing uh typically turns to like 7500 rpm uh we only were seeing around 6300 on that pool so uh very promising very promising <laughs> Hey, what, what's the smack talk? Come on. <laughs> this guy from FFM had the uh, NA title for a while, but we've, uh, we've, we've <laughs> knocked, knocked him off. <laughs> Mr. Cavey, here he is. How are you going, mate? Yeah, good, mate. Good. I welcome Dave to come back and re-challenge. Has it, hasn't Cavey got a record here for, for Hemi on the dyno, does he know? Oh, yeah. Don't know he's got a boat bar record. Yeah, he's got a boat bar record. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, that's, that, that now takes, on the very first hit, that's taken the ASPO record, so that's not too bad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah we're just, uh, honestly, we're not, we're, well, we're dialing in the setup, but also just turning a little bit more RPM. Um, we start out, obviously, not swinging it for the fences, and then we slowly build up as we go. Um, so yeah, no, definitely looking good. Sweet. Definitely. And the plugs? Sensors fine. Yeah. These plugs, I'm guessing, these have been in it for... Yeah, they're not new ones. Like... Yeah, these have been in it for a little bit, yeah. <coughs> yeah. Um, yeah, looks... Have we got a new set? Do we I've, have a new set? I've got a... I have a set... I have... I got a set that done two passes. Two passes. They're, they're clean as a whistle. Okay. Yeah, no, that's good. Well, let's... We'll keep grabbing them out in case there's anything outlawing. You yeah. know what I mean? I just want to make sure that the plug... The wide band, the engine, all telling us the same thing. You yeah. know what I mean? I don't want to go 
swing and fuel in a hole if the plug tells us it's lean or something, you know, with the way around. Well, the biggest things have started, so this is third pull in. We're now looking at just making sure everything is uh, lining up how we want it to. So yep. everything's looking, uh, we don't have any outliers. Obviously, we're going through engine bits and pieces. Uh, make sure crankcase vacuum's holding steady, which it is. Crank vac looks really good. Um, fuel pressure, all that sort of stuff oil pressure, just all the normal bits yeah. and pieces, just making sure it's doing what we want it to do. Everything's looking really good. Can you show us that wideband data too you had before? Yeah, yeah, show... we can do the... So here's the... This is the per cylinder wideband data here. Um, so obviously it's a lot, a lot of data stacked over the top of each other. Um, but this is sort of showing us the spread of the engine. As we can see, the, the good thing we're seeing here is that um, honestly, it's not too bad we can definitely do some trimming here what i'm going to do though is before we just take this information for gospel we're pulling the plugs out of the engine to make sure that we can cross reference uh what the wideband's saying to the spark plug um not that i don't trust them it's just that i would rather verify if we have the wideband says rich the plug says rich then we can go okay i think that cylinder's rich you know what i mean and we can we can do an adjustment to that i would be reluctant on engines like this to just go oh the wideband said that hole was rich so let's rip 20 percent fuel out of it you know what i mean um that's a quick way to trip, trip over yourself so to speak you know what i mean so um i always like to go back to the tried and true method of let's pull the plugs out let's see what they say yep. um and then like i said if we've got two data points that are verifying um then we've got a much that then that'll make me go okay let's do a similar trim so what do you reckon Katie? is that impressive or what i don't know it is it is absolutely is, he, is davo turning it hard enough <laughs> nah, mate, no, nah, no, nah. we need to go about 89. It's a pro stock engine. We can go to almost nine. <laughs> Turn it up, Dave. Give the orders. No, it's, not, it's not a pro stock engine. It's a street car. It's a street car. Yeah, sure it is. <laughs> Sounds like it. Yeah, one low slash no, mate. I've been, I've been paying Reggie on this thing for a long time, since, since 87. Back to back run then with the bonnets on and off. What was the difference in power there? It was about we were seeing about a ten horsepower drop with the bonnet on. I did actually see in the data log is ever so slightly a little bit of manifold vacuum being pulled when the scoop gets put on. Um, I'll be interested to see what that translates to at the track though, because that whole idea of that scoop, it's trying to take advantage of the high pressure area at the back of the windscreen here. Um, and if you look inside it, it's designed to funnel that high pressure air back up to the engine. Um, so realistically, running it here is not a fair shake of the, you know, yeah. of the can for it. Yeah. Um, we really need to do some back-to-back -back runs at the track um, to see what it's going to do there. But I'm sure at the track it'll do what it's supposed to do. All right, and Matt's under the car now. What's he doing at the moment? We're turning the fuel pressure up a little bit. Um, we only reason is that we're just going to we want just want to have a bit more headroom on the injectors. So on motor, we're running about to about 65 to 66 percent duty cycle of the yep. fuel system. Um, which is totally fine, but maybe in this engine's future we might play around with some other things. Maybe some fuels that require more fuel system. Maybe some uh, gas that requires some more fuel system. <laughs> um, so what we're going to do is we're going to finish up tuning on the yeah. dyno here. I want to. We'll do it at the higher fuel pressure, which will give us that headroom on the fuel system, so that if we do add uh, something later on, we can just do that quite easily. Yeah, sweet. You never have to change the fuel pressure. No, you won't. Now, when you tighten the nut up, you'll bump it up too high. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now it's 
road agree. Well, Matt, Matty was saying that when you were at the track, because obviously oh, we just checked on it here. We ran it at we ran it here. We ran it at 35. Then we ran it at 36 and a half yeah. on here. Yeah, um, and then I think he said you ended up going to 30, 37 at the 30, track, and it picked up mile an hour again. Yeah. So those first runs we've been doing were at 36. Yep. We've just got 37 in this next one we're That's, about to do. Yeah. So we'll see what it does with the 37. Yep. Um, obviously the air's rubbish at the moment, so typically with so much water in the air, it'll take the advantage, Nothing but you might help. find, is it, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. So, but then we might find if we get a really cool dry air, um, it may not need, you know, we might be able to pull a degree back out of it and still run peak mile an hour. Yeah, so, yeah, but it's yeah. Sad. If, 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 if you put a degree in it and it hates it, then you go, nah, 36 is number. Well, yeah. It's the same, then you just yeah. Knock it, knock yeah. It yeah. It's just going to go 802. 802. 802. Is, that, is 800 the magic number, is it? 802. And I'd be happy with 800. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, 800 I'm, and 8. Yeah, I don't too. Yeah. <laughs> 800 well, and 8. Yeah. 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 Even like the late 7s that it is. That's, that's like, that's damn stout. That's it. Yeah. It's badass. What am I going to do with all my jets and stuff? Just build another car. What did you say before, oh. Katie? When that when that EMP gets dropped, you'll be yeah. sorted. <laughs> yeah, garbage forever, mate. Garbage forever. <laughs> Ooh, we're all really happy with the results so far. It's uh, it's uh. I would say it's actually exceeding expectations. Yeah, we were just hoping to, like, equal Carbies, because, car like, credit where credit's due, Carbies are actually normally king when it comes to naturally aspirated horsepower. I am actually surprised. Obviously, Matt's done a great job of the injector position and stuff like this, but this thing to go, uh, basically, to pick up on the Carbies is actually quite impressive. I think there's, there is things we changed fuel and pipes and stuff like that as well, so it's not a true apples-to-apples -apples comparison. But either way, we're just stoked that it's making more than it ever has by quite some margin. So... Um, but we were just talking about before, so we're in Queensland right now, it's uh, November, so uh, welcome to uh, Queensland humidity. So at the moment we're in, in the Dino Bay right this second, it is 30.4 degrees Celsius and 64% humidity, which trust me, you can feel it, it is swimming in here at the moment. Um, all that is bad for making naturally aspirated horsepower, heat and humidity, the humidity, the air takes up place of oxygen so it's one of those things that uh like i said both those things hurt horsepower so we we'll actually thought we'd just do a quick little uh little thing we can show you how a correction works on the dyno so at the moment we're not running any corrections with no corrections it's just raw value how hard is this machine turning the dyno right um numbers we're seeing about 796 797 it did hover in those high 790s and what we can do is we can just put the we'll just turn the correction factor on uh, which is the SAE correction. So we can just see power correction here is on none. You, you, Dino, you do all your cars no correction, that's right? I do pretty much all my cars no correction, mainly because I do a lot of boosted cars, and I find that the I really just want to know how hard is the car turning the dyno, and it, I find we get a better apples to apples comparison, especially in Queensland here, because like I said, the air is so bad, so to speak, um, it will always add horsepower, and I actually would rather be reporting lower than higher. I don't want to be saying to someone, oh, this thing makes, you know, a thousand horsepower, and then you're just like, yeah, that's because it's got a 20% correction. They're yeah. not 20%, but it's yeah. got a huge correction. Yeah, yeah, factor, yeah. You know what I mean? Um, yep. Anyway, so we've just turned the correction on. So as you see, it's gone from 797 to 812 horsepower when we turned the SAE correction on. Um, so as you can see, there is a bit there, and that's just because the air we're currently operating in is quite bad. Like I said, it's got high humidity, and it's got a high ambient temperature right now. So yep. the SAE correction is saying, hey, guys, if you were in perfect conditions, it's not perfect conditions, it's just the standard conditions, which is, I think it's about 25 degrees Celsius, and I think it assumes almost zero humidity, okay. which we never see in Queensland. Yep. Um, but it's saying that's what the Benjamin would make. So, yep. Yep. Yeah. All right, so moral of the story is, Dave, take a photo now, mate. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 800 horsepower NA. <laughs> yeah, everything needs to be corrected. Yeah, yeah well, <laughs> in school, that's what they want to do all the time. Well, they want to correct everything. <laughs> correct. So, what's is this for your eyes or is this just because it's. No, it's a special tool, mate. Look at like, the, uh, we got that pretty good too. Even doctors use them. Like, it's, it's a. How can you see a picture of what it does? Oh, I, I can probably zoom in there, yeah. Can you zoom in there? Let's see what it. Try and get some focus. Oh, so you can zoom right in on the electrode. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I can't really get there to be honest. But. I like that. That's yeah. cool. I like it too. I've so you can perfectly find the strap where it is. Yeah. Yeah. And if you need any sort of 
Uh, yeah, any investigation I can look into that too for you. I got a mole on my arm. I can yeah. check that one out. That's <laughs> oh, that one's all right. It's, all right. Yeah. <laughs> it's not every day you get to see a 565 big block screaming on the dyno, and this has been an experience. I've never seen this on the dyno before. It just to be, I was over in the back corner here, just like rattles your bones. It's absolutely wild. And the outcome of today has been pretty successful. I think, you know, Kai's smiling, Matt and David cheering. 796 it's called 800 horsepower na is is pretty damn stout it's very stout it's um there's not many combinations that'll do that and then this is it's actually doing really really well for, for what it is yeah this episode it, it kind of this car was meant to be a bit of a carby versus efi comparison but there's so much that's changed like the the pipes is the biggest difference what were they before tri-wires like two inch tri-wires was it yeah and now they're two and a half, is it? Two so and a quarter, four and a one. Two and yeah. a quarter, four and a one. The pipes have changed, and it's that's probably the biggest power adder probably with this and changing the fuel over too. So, not really yeah, as as Kai said before, an apples to apples comparison, but still to show that the the EFI and the data that Kai's pulling from the ECU with the eight Y bands is, is pretty cool. So something different on the Skid Factory, which we haven't experienced before. Usually we're we're, we're a fan of turbo stuff, so. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Or supercharged, but um, no, it's good. So no, I think it was a, a really good thing. I think the other thing that's a big one as well is um, data as well. So Matt's previously had a race pack in the car, um, yep. and he's used to pulling logs off that. And then when you got that data, I mean, with the carby, you're then sort of scratching your head of throwing jets and stuff at it. Now we've got um, full sensor suite on the car, so we've got a really, really good uh, suite of sensors on here, so we can look at everything right from pan vac to individual O2s. Um, you know, we've got a, a bunch of sensors on the gearbox so we can make sure that's doing what it's supposed to do. I think what Matt will now find is now when we start that next race season next year is um, that some of those issues he'd been plaguing him, I think, will be all but gone, and then yeah. he'll have open up a whole other uh, possibility for bringing the car faster and more consistent as well, which is the main thing. Now we just got to download the new Haltech app. I don't know when that's coming out, actually, and we'll get uh, Davo on the phone to uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. connect, connect to the Nexus R three and throwing a degree or two of timing at it and on the phone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Dave Circuli. I just showed Dave how to use the silent button on his phone the other day, so this is going to be quite a big jump <laughs> in technology for him. Absolutely. So massive shout out to Kai Knight Family Motorsport for helping us out today, and obviously Matt and Dave for letting us film some content on this car. This is an absolute weapon and uh, I'm excited to get down to the track and hang out and see this thing PB uh, in both the 8th and the quarter. What are we doing? Kenda? Is that what's happening? Kenda, I'd say. Kenda. February 24th, I think there we they've go. said. Yeah. Next year. So, yeah, that'll be where the track's there for us. It'll still be hot as, but um, with what it's showing us today, I still think that we'll, I feel confident we'll PB, definitely. Sweet. Yeah. So stay tuned for a future yeah. episode of The Rogan Factory. <laughs> Thanks for watching once again, as always. We'll see you guys next time. Cheers, dudes. And so... And... But... So... Uh, 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 Camaro, Chevrolet, Camaro. How do we know we can trust Julian Miguel? What's the verdict? I don't know. Tomato, tomato. Monaro, Monero? Yeah, it's not a Monero, is it? Well, you could have them hanging out of your hat like it's the, like they're dreadies. <laughs> you reckon? Today on the Skid Factory, we're re-injecting some technology into this big block chef powered Irox Z Camaro. As a thanks to Kai, last time I was here, he didn't have any electric tools, so Kai's scored himself a threat ratchet and rattle gun. He's cheering. Hey, and when we were at the track, he also didn't have a, he had a 
Manky old tool kit, so another Tool Pro X molded case for you, Kai, over here. Cheers. Danielle steals that. Danielle's gonna steal it? I bet ya. Well, I think there might be a 10 mil missing out of it already, so you oh, might okay. have to replace that one. So, <laughs> nah. And Matt, Matt wanted to give a shout out to Kai too, didn't you? I yeah. do want to give a shout out to Kai. Honestly, I wouldn't have gone down this program of the FI on this car if it wasn't for knowing someone like Kai. He's a true professional and will happily give up time at any time of the day. Look at this. No way. <laughs> hey, man in the prime of his health and me. <laughs> you, just, you just want to be careful where you wore them. Two thoroughbreds here. Look at this. <laughs> hey, Dave, can you point, you to, wear these to, winter point to the corner for me, Dave, where you can buy one? Down over here. Where's that? Oh, over here. Somewhere. Wherever you want. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a YouTuber, mate. Yeah, all right. You're doing all right. Okay. <laughs> I just have to wait for the postman. <laughs> right.